All right, next we have Jacob Neumann, who's going to tell us about, uh, who's going to give us a sampling of synthetic one cap mm -hmm. theory. Thank you, uh, and thanks again to the, uh, the organizers for putting this uh, together. I'm really excited to uh, be here and to uh, talk to you about um, some synthetic one category theory. Uh, and this is a uh, joint work with my advisor, uh, Torsten. Uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and dive in. So um, here are a few of my favorite things. Uh, I like path induction, the Yonet dilemma, uh, univalence, and free theorems, or parametricity. And so my goal in this talk is to uh, kind of spin together a wild theory for you uh, that's going to connect all these different dots. And so the theory uh, that I claim does this uh, is the directed type theory of uh, the category model. Uh, and so let me give you a quick warning is that the, this is a work in progress. So um, I have a preprint uh, available here. Uh, which kind of spells out the, the like core details of, of, of this construction, but some of the, the more ambitious uh, applications and connections are, are not there yet. Um, eventually, it'll be on the archive uh, once it's a little bit more complete. Um, so yeah, feel free to, um, um, you know, I'm, I'm eager to hear if there are any, anything that strikes you as uh, obviously false or, or uh, problematic. All right, so the, uh, the category model. Uh, which is going to be kind of the setting for, for, uh, for all this. So if you've seen any of my, uh, if any, any of you have seen my, my uh, talks before on directed type theory, you'll know my usual thing is I love to take the groupoid model and uh, replace the groupoids with categories. Uh, and that's what the category model is. Uh, so um, the groupoid model uh, is uh, from Hoffman and Streicher, uh, is a, a model of type theory, uh, which I'm going to take to mean a CWF. Uh, where the contexts are groupoids, and uh, the types are, are indexed families of groupoids. So a, a, a type and context gamma uh, is a, a family of groupoids indexed by gamma, or a functor from, from gamma into the category of groupoids, um, and so on and so on. So uh, I don't think the rest of the details are going to be too relevant for uh, what I'm going to say. And so uh, the, the category model is, uh, like I said, yeah, just go through and just replace all the groupoids with categories. Uh, and so I'm, I refer to this as, as polarizing the, uh, the category, or polarizing the groupoid model, because we kind of introduce a, a, a polarity that I'm going to uh, talk about in a second. Um, but yeah, so our contexts are our categories, and, our, and a, uh, a type in context gamma is a, a family of categories indexed over gamma. And so my goal is to uh, develop this, uh, this model as a, as a model of directed type theory, is find, find a, what, what style of directed type theory, uh, um, and I'll say more about what, what directed type theory means, uh, what, what style of directed type theory does this model? And specifically, I want, I want to apply this directed type theory to do uh, synthetic category theory. So we know that, that the uh, usual type theory, and, and uh, for example, the theory of the groupoid model, uh, is a synthetic theory of groupoids. And so this ought to be a, a synthetic theory of categories. So uh, there's kind of two, two uh, um, kind of styles of, of directed type theory out there. Um, the, there's the one, and I, I think I have some of the references at the, at the end. Um, there's one style doesn't, doesn't do this, doesn't, uh, doesn't have a kind of modal type, typing discipline for, for covariance and contravariance. Uh, and so like the works of, of Reland Shulman and uh, Weaver and Licata, uh, and some of, the, some of these theories uh, don't, don't do what I'm, I'm going to do here. Uh, but the, the style of directed type theory that I'm doing here, um, which is kind of following uh, the work of, uh, of uh, um, Licata and Harper, um, adopts these polarities. Uh, and so, uh, in, so we have kind of two kinds of, of polarities, two kinds of negation. Uh, one on, on contexts, or the kind of deeper one. So it's for every context, I can negate it uh, and to get a negative context. And for every substitution, I can also uh, negate it to get, to get a substitution between the negated contexts. And this, this arises naturally in the, in the category model um, as just the, the opposite operation. Uh, so for every for, so remember, contexts are categories, and so for every context, I can uh, take its opposite. And that's, that's really how this is interpreted, and then it just rises to the level of a, a functor from categories to categories. So this is the one, one kind of, of negation that we have uh, in, the, in the category model. Um, but, uh, and I call this one the deep, deep polarization, or the deep negation. Uh, but we also have a, have a shallow one, uh, which is the, uh, the, the negation on types. 
Uh, and so this, uh, this is the kind of negation that you see in like uh, Page North's paper on directed type theory, uh, where we can also, within a given context, we can uh, negate types. So for every type A, we have a, a type A minus. And this is interpreted in the category model just by post-composing with, uh, uh, with the type uh, negation operation. And so these, these are all tied together uh, by having a negative context extension operation. Uh, so for every, for every context and for every uh, type in gamma minus, I can extend gamma by A to get a new context. And we have this nice, nice law that, uh, that ties together uh, the negative context extension, negative contexts, and negative types, and negative substitutions. So it kind of ties it all together. I'm not going to really say anything more about, about this, uh, this, uh, um, this law today, um, but if you're here tomorrow, then you'll, be, uh, you'll get to hear from me again, uh, where I'm going to talk all, a lot about this, uh, this particular law. All right, so uh, having, this, having this depolarization, so not just on types, but on, on context and, and context, uh, context extension, uh, allows us to formulate pi types. Uh, and so these are the rules, um, the same ones you see in Lakata and Harper, uh, that, uh, if I, that I can form pi types. And since we're in the category model, we have to be careful about, about variance, about uh, 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 yeah, negative and positive appearances. And so here, the... the, the uh, the, the neg negation allows us to uh, mark, the, so A here appears negatively, and so we mark that by saying it's in gamma minus, and uh, whereas B is, is a, a positive type in, in, this, uh, in this context, uh, and so, so that, that encodes the negative and positive occurrence of A and B uh, in this pi type. Um, and these are just what the semantics have to be. Uh, so if you just take the, the pi type semantics from the groupoid model um, and you're careful about when you use uh, a morphism or when you use its opposite, or when Hoffman and Streicher do, uh, then, then this is uh, the semantics you have to adopt to get pi types. And it satisfies uh, the kind of law you, you would expect. But, so, but now, uh, to really get into directed type theory, what we need are, are Hom types. So, so the, uh, uh, if we, in, in the groupoid model, we, had, we have identity types. Um, that was kind of the whole point of the groupoid model is to study identity types. Uh, and so if we, if we try to do the same thing in the category model, uh, what we get are, are we call HOM types. Um, so this is the kind of bread and butter of, of directed type theory. And so here, again, the, uh, the, uh, now we're using the shallow uh, polarity to, to mark uh, the negative and positive instances. So here, if, here T is a, a type in A minus, and T prime is a, uh, a term of, of A, uh, and then given that, I can form the type uh, of Homs from T to T minus. And so, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, so the, th the kind of thing to note about this is that, uh, is that these are not symmetric. Uh, so if I, in the, in the groupoid model, you know, if you have an identity from A to B, or from T to T prime, then you get automatically get an identity from T prime to T. But you can't do that uh, here. These are, these are not symmetric in general. And so our, our, our simple counterexample is in the empty context. Uh, in the empty context, a, a type is just a category, and a term is just an object. Um, and so we can come up with, with uh, plenty of, uh, of examples, like the walking category, for example, uh, where we have uh, a morphism from from one object to the other, but not, not, not the reverse. Um, so these are, so this, this is a, a counterexample to show that you can't, you can't prove symmetry. So all the, uh, all the stuff that I'm going to spell out um, going forward is not going to allow you to prove uh, the symmetry. So these are, are genuinely HOM types and not identity types. Uh, and then another thing to note is that uh, these can be iterated, uh, and so the uh, so we can have Homs between Homs between Homs between Homs, which is, of course, what we want. Um, but this is, this is the, the category model. Uh, and so the, uh, if we iterate very far, we, we, uh, it trivializes pretty quickly. And so uh, if I have Homs between Homs, uh, they, they are unique. So uh, in the same way that the groupoid model uh, violates UIP uh, at the first level, but, uh, um, but validates it uh, one level up, uh, same thing here. So I can have multiple HOMs between two given uh, terms, but I can only have at most one HOM between uh, two given HOMs. And they also are symmetric. 
Uh, and so we get back uh, basically identity types. Uh, and so I'm going to write identity types for these. Um, and this is going to be, of course, important for doing synthetic category theory because the, uh, uh, um, if I want to talk about category theory, then not only do I need objects and Toms, but I need identities between Toms in order to state the, the equations that are important. Uh, and so I, I do have that uh, in here. All right, so the other, the other ingredient that we really need in order to, uh, in order to uh, get started here uh, is directed path induction. So the whole, the whole idea here, the whole idea of synthetic category theory is that we want to be able to do uh, category theory in a type theoretic setting, uh, which will allow us to uh, use n nice tools like path induction uh, in order to make category theoretic arguments. And so if you remember the, the basic idea of, of usual uh, path induction, um, so if we're dealing with identity types, then you know, we have REFL, which is an identity type between T and itself. Uh, and then, uh, um, this is yeah, kind of complicated, but uh, you, you're familiar, you know and love path induction, is that uh, if I have some type family uh, over, ha over identities out of T, uh, and I have some, uh, some witness of that type family at T REFL, then for any T prime and any P uh, out, of, out of T, then I can prove uh, uh, M for TP. Uh, I think that should be T prime T there, yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, this is this is the the the, uh, the notion of of path induction that we know and love. And so what we want to do is is uh, directed path induction is uh, not is to do path induction uh, for HOM types instead of identity types. And so the problem with this is that uh, how do we how do we even type REFL? Because um, so this is raffle for identity types, um, and so if we want to state um, directed path induction, we need we need a raffle. Uh, that's an essential part of, of of induction. And so if we're trying to do uh, hom, uh, yeah, if we're trying to state raffle uh, as a hom from t to t, which would correspond to the identity type, or sorry, the identity morphism, then well, if uh, remember the the we needed that the first argument is negative and the second argument is positive. So if we say that T is a term of type A, then this is, this is ill-formed because this needs to be A minus. Whereas if we say it's A minus, then this is ill-formed because this needed to be A plus. Uh, so we have a bit of a problem here. Uh, we, can't even, we can't even say what the, uh, in this formalism, we can't even say what the, uh, identity, or what the identity morphism is. So how do, we make, how do we make a term T both positive and negative? Uh, so the, the kind of traditional solution to this um, is to use core types. Um, so this is the, the, um, the, the uh, approach that the North uses um, and, and develops kind of fully, uh, is that we have some further operation on types, uh, a core. So if I have a type A, I have a core, uh, which I interpret uh, using the, the core, uh, the core uh, operation on, on uh, yeah, the greatest subgroupoid of a, of a category. And then uh, you can sh you can show that you know any any given uh, any term of such a core type uh, can kind of be coerced into either a positive or a negative type, uh, and so therefore I can state raffle from a core uh, term to itself and and state directed path induction. Uh, and so that's that's what Paige does uh, uh, in her uh, paper. But the problem with this is that uh, this only allows us to prove things about HOMs that are based at core types. Uh, so it's, it's kind of weird from a synthetic category theoretic uh, perspective because then in order to prove anything about categories, we constantly have to be making, be making detours into the, into the core groupoid, and we're not allowed to prove things about arbitrary HOMs or even arbitrary HOMs based at a given, a given point. Uh, uh, we, always have to, we always have to deal with, uh, with, the, with the core types. So we, uh, we propose, a, 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 and this is kind of one of the main contributions of, of this, uh, this paper, uh, is a different approach, is instead of neutralizing the types uh, and taking their core, uh, we're going to neutralize the contexts. Uh, and so we're going to work with groupoid contexts. And uh, so in any uh, neutral, any groupoid context, uh, what we can do is we can coerce between uh, terms of A minus and terms of A, or terms of A and terms of A minus. And so, uh, yeah, we get these nice, this nice coercion operation uh, that allows us to go back and forth between uh, A and A minus. 
And so then we can just state REFL as, oh, you know, if I need to say what's, uh, what's REFL on a term of A minus, then I just, in order to get this as a term of A, a plus, I just coerce it to there, um, and, and vice versa if I have a term of type A. And so we get, uh, we get a nice, um, we're, we're able to state REFL in this case. And working in a neutral context does not, does not enforce symmetry on us. So we're not reverting back to the, uh, uh, to the groupoid model. Uh, because our, if you remember our example, our counterexample to symmetry was in the empty context, uh, which, is, which is a, a groupoid, which is a neutral context. So uh, we, we're, not, we're not reintroducing symmetry, and we're not reverting to the groupoid uh, model. But, so what we can do is now, uh, in, in a neutral context, we can, we can state directed path induction, and uh, uh, we, can, well, we, can, we can state REFL, and we can uh, state directed path induction. So, uh, and this is just exactly what you, what you think it would be. Uh, so given a, a term, uh, T of type A minus, and a, and a, uh, and a type family uh, over, over Homs out of, out of T, I... Uh, if I have a, uh, so I think this is often called the method and the, the motive, or no, this is motive and that's method. Uh, if I have a, a, a method from, uh, uh, for, uh, for raffle, and so then I just coerce this to minus t in order to get it to fit uh, in here. If I have it for raffle, uh, then for any, uh, any t prime and any p um, out from t to t prime, I get uh, m of t prime p. And so this is our, our notion of directed path induction. And so uh, the, uh, there's also, uh, so you know that I wrote J plus here, there's also a J minus, uh, which is kind of just the same thing, but covariant. Um, I'm, I'm gonna skip over that uh, just for brevity, but that's, that's in, the, uh, in the preprint. So just kind of a quick example, uh, we can use this to find composition of Homs. So if I have P from uh, T to T prime and Q from uh, T prime to T double prime, then I can define p dot q, uh, which is their composition from t to t double prime, uh, by directed path induction. And it's really simple. I just say uh, p dot refl is equal to p. Um, and so you can make you can make this more precise using you know the j's and the the um, type families and and all that. But um, this is the kind of s, you know informal essence of it is p dot refl is equal to p. And moreover, you can prove that this this composition operation is associative up to the identity types uh, between the Homs. Uh, all, again, by directed path induction. And for the unit laws, uh, one of them holds just definitionally, uh, p dot refl is equal to p, that's, that's literally the definition. Uh, and, uh, or this is, you know, by the, by the j beta. Um, and then the other one is provable by uh, directed path induction, again, on p. Uh, and so we're, 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 you know, making progress here on, on synthetic category theory. We, we have a, a, a theory going, we have composition, we have identity homs where, where we got category theory uh, going uh, in here. So with my remaining time, uh, which is how long? Uh, a couple minutes, cool. Uh, with my remaining time, I want to kind of uh, yeah, make good on, my, on, on where I started uh, with the, all these different connections to these uh, different interesting, uh, interesting things that are encompassed by this theory. Uh, so the first one is, is a connection to the dependent Yoneda lemma. Uh, and so this is inspired by a uh, real showman's paper who do uh, kind of an infinity version of this. And it's just, a, it's more kind of just a neat fact that, uh, so if I have, uh, so this is the, uh, the covariant dependent Yoneda lemma, uh, which says that if I have a, a functor, uh, if I have a functor F um, and a functor G on the category of elements of F, then uh, the, uh, for any uh, natural in I phi, uh, G of I phi is naturally isomorphic to these dependent natural transformations. Uh, from Yoneda, the covariant Yoneda I, uh, to, to this uh, kind of modified G. And so you can just prove this as a, as a, uh, a, a simple consequence of the, uh, of, the, of the usual covariant Yoneda lemma. And so if I instantiate this for F being a uh, HOM I, the, this, this representable functor, um, and phi being the identity function, uh, then I get this, this uh, this nice little isomorphism that G of I identity is naturally isomorphic to, to this expression here. And uh, yeah, so F, the F is representable, so the, its action is composition. And so J after the identity is just J. So I get this, this nice statement here, 
which, uh, if we look at it, uh, so this, this direction is just evaluation of the identity. Uh, and then the kind of remarkable thing about the Yonai dilemma is that we can undo evaluation of the identity, that we get, a, we get an inverse to that. Uh, so that's kind of the meat of the Yonai dilemma. And so what we're doing here uh, in, with directed path induction uh, is that we can evaluate, so if we have something that turns uh, any, any HOM into a proof of uh, M T prime P, uh, then we can evaluate that at REFL to get uh, M negative T REFL T. And so J is just saying that we can go the other way around. Uh, and so if you squint at this for a little bit, you'll notice that these are basically saying the same thing. So we have this kind of nice, uh, this nice kind of matching between directed path induction and, uh, and uh, the, the dependent Yonai lemma. And similarly for the negative one and, uh, and, uh, the, co and the contravariant uh, Yonai lemma. All right, um, let me kind of breeze through this. So we also have a, a, a directed univalence principle here. Uh, so we can get a universe of sets. Uh, and we get that the, um, yeah, the, whose terms are, are codes of, of types. And uh, if we compute out what the homs of this universe should be, it's just going to be, uh, it's going to be a, a type of functions. It's going to be interpreted as the type of functions uh, from X to Y. Uh, and similarly, if we look at uh, terms from of x arrow y, uh, we also get that that is interpreted as x arrow y. And so we can kind of get this, uh, yeah, we can get a nice equivalence between, uh, yeah, we can you know, state this internally, this, this equivalence between hom, homs and functors. So we get a, a kind of nice uh, univalence for, uh, yeah, a nice directed univalence. Uh, and yeah, for future work is uh, an untruncated version of this uh, that you know works for um, kind of arbitrary higher categories, but uh, we're not there yet. And then finally, um, let me just uh, state this really quickly that uh, we can view uh, any any functions in this in this theory. So a function from C to D. So remember, C and D are kind of are types which are behaving kind of like synthetic categories. And so functions here behave like functors. And so we can define the morphism part. Uh, we get that basically for free. And uh, yeah, we can find that by directed path induction. And so for anything of the appropriate type, for any pi for all C and C uh, from HOM, uh, it gives us a HOM from F of C to G of C, uh, we, we get that this is automatically natural. natural. Uh, and so we can do that by path induction on, on G, or sorry, on P. Uh, and so what we get is that for anything of this, of this type, we get the naturality. So it's a kind of naturality for free. So that's, the, that's the, somewhat of the connection to, uh, to free theorems and, and parametricity. So uh, there's a lot more to be spelled out there, but uh, hopefully that kind of gives you a little bit of a flavor of, of why, I, why I think there is a, a parametricity connection here. All right, uh, that's all I wanted to say. So uh, there's some references. And uh, yeah, there's the preprint and the slides again, or the slides will be there. So uh, thank you for listening. Are there any questions? Um, I was kind of curious about this neutral context that you kind of needed to phrase the, the um, reflexivity and that you never really told us what, what this was um, doing. Can you tell a bit more about uh, where, where, like, how, how do you restrict the context, basically, to, to, get, to get there? Um. So I'm, I'm, I guess I'm not understanding what you mean. So the, uh, like, why, um, let me go back to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so there's the, the, there was the syntactic reason that in order to get it of, like, A minus and A plus, uh, uh, we need, uh, yes, th yeah, we need these coercion operators, but oh, was that what you were asking about, or? Uh, I think, no, it was later on when you had this, this judgment saying that something had to be a neutral, uh, I think later, uh, still, um, still further. Uh, uh, yes, exactly here. That the the fact that this gamma is a neutral context. Like, what what does this mean? 
Yeah, so, um, so I mean, so, so neutral right. context means, means groupoid, so this, yeah. that's like, uh, and to kind of make this fully precise, and, and I'm glad you asked about this, so, so to make this fully precise, we'll probably, we'll need some kind of uh, like zone context theory or some kind of like modal theory to make sense mm -hmm. of, of like different kinds of, of contexts, and so that's, that's definitely a, a big kind of piece of future work here. Okay. Um, but so as, as for why we need to restrict to neutral context in order to define uh, this, this uh, yeah, in this coercion operation, um, basically the idea is that is I mean, if you spell it, it, it has to do with the the semantics of terms, yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, and so basically, in order to be able to do this, you kind of have to go through the the you know this term and basically swap yeah. around all yeah, of the okay. uh, uh, everything that occurs in gamma, yeah. and so that's why we, that's kind of why we need uh, it to be a neutral context. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, does that, just out of curiosity, does that mean you're also going to need a notion of like neutral type, neutral term, and everything like that to build the neutral context out of? Probably. Um, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll say a little bit about this tomorrow, but um, yeah, I, I suspect that uh, in order to, in order to, yeah, make, make reasonable sense of, of, of this like neutral context, we'll need, uh, also need, we'll also need to bring in core types. Um, so those, don't, those don't, don't entirely go away, just, uh, the idea was to not use not use core types for uh, stating a raffle, but um, yeah, there probably will need, need to be those. Sorry, I jumped in line there. <laughs> so I, I also want to uh, remark on the neutral context, but the rest of the talk was, was very nice, I think. Um, but for the neutral context, I think it is, if you have a neutral context, you're using it here as a groupoid, so you're applying basically the forgetful functor, which I believe is left adjoined to the core. Mm -hmm. So there is some dependency involved here, but I think in the end you are anyway taking A in the core, like little A in the core of big A, because you're coming from the from a groupoid, so the only thing you can actually use is the core. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, no, you, I mean, you, uh, so th I mean, that, um, but maybe I'm not understanding you, but the, the, uh, that was the point of, of the, like, the, the counter example, the symmetry happens in the, in the, in the empty context. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, ju I'm just saying that I, I think this, cannot be more expressive than, than the approach of page where you take the core of A because the fact that like the little a semantically is something that comes from gamma, which is a groupoid and goes into A, but you can never actually use a non-invertible morphism that lives in A because you're coming from a groupoid. Hmm. But little a will then just be an object. So it might as well live in the core of big A. That's my point. Like, if you. No, but in the same way that you could say here, if I can go from gamma to A, then I can also go from gamma to A op. I can similarly say, similarly say you could also go from gamma to A core by taking the core of domain and codomain. Hmm. You can go from gamma core to A core, and gamma core is just gamma. Yeah, I guess I'm. Um yeah, I guess I'm not, not quite seeing your argument. I mean, I, I, uh, I mean, the the kind of motivation behind this is 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 trying to like the the our, like the observation here is that this works very uh, like this works very nicely in the empty context because uh, then we don't have to worry because then we don't have a lot of these annoying uh, a lot of these annoying uh, dependencies on the context uh, and we don't have to keep track of a bunch of a bunch of polarities uh, and so doing synthetic category theory in the in the empty context is, is relatively easy uh, and so the the idea is just to abstract that uh, further um, but I, I still maintain it doesn't doesn't uh, like again using the empty context as an example that doesn't force any kind of uh, symmetry on us because uh, if you know this type theory in the empty context is just 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 category theory which is not not inherently symmetric. Um, but maybe we can maybe we, maybe we should take it offline. I'm, I'm interested. I, I think it is. embeds in into pages approach. Okay, yeah, we, we 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 can take this offline. I'm I'm curious to hear more. Okay, any more questions? Yes. Hi, I have a question. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Uh, are you able to define uh, at like an actual category? For example, just a, you know a category with two objects with a non-trivial arrow between them, and would you be able to show that the arrow cannot be reversed? Um, so, so I mean, we this is this is kind of a, uh, still at a semantic level, so we don't have like a concrete syntax for this. Uh, but I mean, li like I said, you know, in in the empty context, like every every category is is just a type in the empty context. So, uh, th I mean, that was that was my my kind of 
uh, example of, of, of a counter example, example of dissymmetry is, is yeah, the walking, the walking category, which is two objects and one uh, non-identity morphism between them. Uh, that, 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 that is a, a counter example, or that's a, yeah, a counter example that you can't, you can't prove uh, symmetry in general here. Uh, uh, yeah, so that, that, that was the counter example. Uh, if, if, yeah, I think, was that your question or? I mean, I'm, I'm asking if the, the theory is strong enough to say that uh, you, you can prove that you can't prove symmetry in that sense. Hmm. Improve. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I feel like we, we, we would need to, uh, yeah, we, we, we would need uh, like a syntax, uh, like, yeah, I mean, my, my, my strong inclination, or my strong intuition is that, yeah, once we add, once we add the, uh, uh, the syn once we have like a, a concrete syntax for this, then it will be able to, uh, to demonstrate those, those kinds of things. And, you know, it will be able to develop these specific counterexamples internally in the theory uh, or in the syntax. But like I said, we're, we're not quite at that point yet. Yeah. yeah, but just if you, if you add the interval as a, as, a, as a type in the empty context, then obviously you can prove that it's not invertible. Then. Okay. All right, is your question quick? Okay, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Perhaps we'll <laughs> go for the break. Okay, we have a 30-minute break now. Okay. Oh, sorry, we should thank Jacob again. Oh. <laughs> thank you.